music producers. It's Curtis King at CurtisKingBeats.com. Let me ask you a question. You ever make a beat and if you're a tight beat producer or you use that as a marketing technique, you ever make a beat and you sit there stuck? You're like, the beat is fire, but what type tight beat is this? <laughs> That's a crazy question. Let's talk about it. Music producers, how do other music producers determine what type beat is their type beat? You just made the beat, and for those of you that don't know, no, the type beat comes after the beat is made. People generally make the beats and they say, huh, what type of beat is this? That's generally how things are done. Some people do it differently, but that's genuinely what a type beat is. But anyways, aside from that, what type beat is this type beat? You're trying to think of it because you're thinking like, man, I have to market this beat and I have to get the right customers to it, the right rappers that want to rap over it, and hopefully those rappers are fans of the rapper that I'm going to use because if they're fans of that beat, they'll likely give my beat a listen. So that being said, how do other producers determine what type beat this beat they just made is? I can't answer it for all music producers, but I can answer it for myself. I can tell you this, whenever I'm making a beat, I'm not thinking about anything else except for making that beat the best it can possibly be. Now, as the beat starts to bring itself together, I guess subconsciously my mind might be making decisions in terms of what synthesizers go well with certain pianos or what 808s go well. And then as soon as I start to put these aesthetics together, a name might pop up in the middle of me making a beat. It doesn't happen often often, but it happens from time to time. Now for those times where it doesn't happen like that, I have to sit there and not just ask myself, okay, what beat does this sound like a rapper? What beat would, who rap rapper will rap over this? I don't ask that question. I start to rap to myself and I ask myself, how was this beat making me rap? If it starts to rap like, then I might say, oh, I can kind of hear Drake on this. Or if I hear, that's a terrible Travis Scott impersonation, but yeah, yeah then I might say, <laughs> straight up, then that might be a Travis Scott type beat, but I like to rap to myself, and then as I start to think of names, I don't always pick the first name that comes to mind. Here's something that I'll do. I go to Google, I type in similar artists to insert the name of the person that came to you, to Travis Scott. I watch Google pull up these names of artists that are similar to them, and then I go in and I check all of the lists, and I see all the artists that typically fit within that aesthetic because Google has their own algorithm for determining how this artist is similar to this other artist based upon their fan base, based upon their numbers, based upon the type of producers they worked with, based upon a bunch of different metrics I don't even understand, but that is one way to do it. Also, a website called Last FM. I use their similar artist search because they give me independent artists or artists that are right on the bubble. Artists that are getting ready to blow up before our eyes, but they're not on a lot of people's radars. So I like to use those. You know, sometimes the most magical moments have happened when I choose tight beats for an artist that a lot of people either said, man, I forgot about that dude. And this does sound like a beat that he, that he would rap over. Or when I happen to find an artist, an independent artist, and I attach their name to the beat, even though they have really a kind of a small following, and then they blow the hell up. And then my beat ends up being some of the top ranked stuff within the type beats searches within YouTube. So you can be early to the game, or you can find somebody that's been forgotten about and use their name. Or sometimes if it's that obvious to you who the artist is, cool, pick that artist. Now go find some of your friends that listen to that artist. And before you even bring their name up, play the beat for them. Find five people to play that beat for. Find your homie that you play Xbox with. Find your other homie that raps over your beats. Find your other homie that's kind of into hip hop but doesn't really know hip hop. Find your sister or your brother that's like fans of music that you don't ever listen to but they know about Travis Scott and a bunch of other people. And then find somebody that can just give you just a left field point of view. I don't know, like your mom or somebody. Ask them who, you, who they hear over it. Because likely you're going to hear some similarities in their responses, in their feedback to that beat. Huh, I kind of hear somebody that like raps really, really slow over this. Huh, interesting. Who raps really slow? Okay, I'll start thinking. Da, 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 da. Then you start to go into your brain and you start to figure out, okay, based upon all this information that I got, this is the artist that I have landed on. So running the Google search, doing the last FM, asking people around you is definitely going to make your life easier as you start to figure out what type, type beat is this beat 
beat made for what rapper? That was so confusing. Why can I say it a lot easier than that? But you guys get where I'm getting at. So that being said, producers, don't overthink the process. You don't have to find the perfect artist because likely the rappers that are coming to your beats, they'll probably find you through the tight beats, but that's not going to be the deciding factor. Oh man, I'm not going to rap on this because he said it's a Nicki Minaj type beat. If it's fire, it's fire. And that's all you got to worry about. But also don't feel like you have to follow the crowd when you're making these tight, tight beats. There are names that are getting a lot of searches that are being underutilized when it comes to the tight beat strategy. Think about Run the Jewels. Run the Jewels is definitely with Killer Mike and LP. Like that's definitely names that people are searching for. But because it's not, I guess, the mainstream, people think that people are not searching for that. Guess what? You could carve yourself out a niche within tight beats that are for artists that are independent. There's always another rock to be turned, but it's just up to you to figure out which rock that is. <laughs> In this life, you would not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. It's Curtis King, a leading voice of the online music producer and rapper community. Don't at me, bees. Please subscribe to the channel below. Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com.